All right, next up, Scott Sheridan. Interesting facts about wines of the world. With props. I had no idea. I don't think he's going to throw them out in the crowd, so you're probably safe. I won't throw them, but I'm giving them away, so pay attention. Not this one. I'm going to drink this. Is the microphone? All right, here we go. I love a good paradox. I love a good paradox, and wine certainly is one. On the one hand, wine is simple as shit, right? It's, it's fermented grapes. On the other hand, it's a lot like you, or some of you. Wine is a complex beauty that just wants to get drunk. But the problem is, really, the problem is everybody thinks that wine is so complex that they can't really get a handle on it, and they feel uncomfortable about it. So let's, let's make it simple. There's three types of wine, really. There's table wine, and that's classified as wines with less than 14% alcohol. There's some dessert wines, and often times those are fortified with extra alcohol. And then we have our sparkling wines, and those include champagne, like this guy. There's a port wine. Ironically, that has some brandy in it, which is distilled grapes, so there's a whole chicken and egg thing. I think we just entered in an infinite loop, but um, that's table wine over there, that's white wine. So an interesting question to ask about wine is, what makes it red? So grapes, right? These are Merlot grapes, they're obviously a red grape. It's not necessarily the grape that makes it red, though. And we'll find out why in two seconds. If you look at these same grapes, when we cut them in half, the inside is white. So that's the stuff that makes the wine right here, this white stuff. So obviously you can make white wine out of red grapes, so what the hell? How are we gonna make some red wine? I will. It's all in the skins, which is in a different slide. But anyway, so we have, <laughs> we have this white wine here, which is actually a pink wine. If you bear with me, I'll explain that in a second. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this white wine, which is actually a pink wine, and we're gonna put the skins in the barrel when we're fermenting the wine, and we're gonna take them out right away instead of leaving them in like we would normally do with a red wine. Therefore, we have a white Merlot, which is this. It's a pink wine, but you can actually make white wines. Another cool thing about the skins is they have this thing called tannins. Tannins are this awesome little component about wine that uh, makes, it, makes it taste a, a certain way. It's got that little thing that dries your tongue out. Right, if you bite into the skin of a grape, the seeds and all that. They also have, these tannins have, they have antioxidants, which are healthy for you. That's why wine is good for you. One to two bottles a day is supposed to be good. <laughs> or is it um, glasses? Something like that. Speaking of bottles, those are different types. We have the split, which is a half glass. We have the half bottle wine, which is obviously a half bottle. We have the regular bottle, which is a normal bottle. We have a magnum, pay attention because there's a trivia question. Magnum is two bottles. All right, we have the Jeroboam, four bottles, and on and on. Okay, for, for the uh, sealing of the wine, we have corks. That's the most common way to seal a wine. Corks are, have been used forever, and uh, they've got their flaws, but um, they come from a special kind of tree, a tree that's an oak tree. There's a thing uh, called the Quercus suber. This grows in Europe, and it also grows in Africa. This part of the tree has been harvested. You can tell it's been missing something, right? That's the cork under the bark, right? So we use cork, but... Like I said, there's a flaw. Environmentally disastrous. Uh, we have another thing called a screw cap. There's another way of sealing a wine. I love the screw cap too. A lot of times people thought, well, shit, that's a, that's a cheap way of doing wine. But no, there's 100 plus dollars a bottle of wine. They're doing screw caps. Uh, also, we have glass corks, if you will. A uh, really good wine called White Howl Lane uh, uses a cork, uh, glass cork, rather. So that's another creative way to do it. We could also box it, if you like. Uh, all right, and then glass types. So you can speak of glass, we have glasses. So um, really good wine is best dealt with in the right glass. So we have, uh, we have different shapes, and so these all determine where it's uh, showing up in your tongue, right? We can swirl the glass. These things are the legs. Actually, that's uh, wrinkles in the screen, but pretend they're legs. Uh, the faster the legs go down the wine of the, the glass, that means there's more alcohol on the wine. Wine is, uh, or alcohol is viscous, right? Sometimes you need to decant wine. Sometimes the server would like, would you like me to decant the wine? Sure you would, because sometimes if it's a young wine, it's very tannic, it's got those things from the skins that make it kind of uh, wonky. You want to get some air in there. You also sometimes want to uh, look at cats. 
the big point of this is that wine is meant to be enjoyed. And uh, let's, uh, let's raise our glasses, whether they be plastic or crystal. Let's say a big cheers and sing, drink some wine. You guys ready to win some wine? Who is paying attention? All right, this wine bottle has two, two bottles worth of wine. I think you said Magnum. I think like 50 people said Magnum. So if you could please share this with the 50 people that said Magnum, I would love you. Thank you. Wine is just a gateway drug for Stranahan's. Thanks, sir.